Hey everyone, uh, welcome. Let's see. All right. Hey folks, how's it going? Hey Allison, how are you? To be in your live video, that's a thing, you can do that. Hey Chelsea, my sister joined. <laughs> um, all right folks, here we go. We are uh, going to start a new live video. Welcome to the Garden Tour Part 2, the, uh, the update on where things are. Good morning. I hope everyone has your coffee ready or a mimosa maybe um, or some brunch. Um, I'm standing here in my garden. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and it's already very warm. It's, I don't know, maybe in the 80s. Um, we had a thunderstorm last night. It's pretty big. Kind of cut the humidity out here in the country, which is nice. Um, hey everyone. Welcome, welcome. So good to see you all. Um, so, Fernwood, um, sound, can you guys hear me? How, how is the sound? Can people hear me? Is it okay? Sound is not so good. Um, yes, okay, okay, cool, thank you. Um, hopefully it's not too junky, the connection. I'm out in the garden, so my Wi-Fi doesn't really reach out here. I'm just using data, so hopefully it's okay. Um, I think I'm just gonna jump in because it's a really good moment. I wanna show you, um, Oh, can I turn this around? There it is. Um, my lens fogged up a little bit because of the humidity. I wanted to show you all uh, the koi ponds. Got it now, cool. Um, so I think the thing I want to focus on today, um, I kind of, you know, when I was asked to do this series, uh, this live feed, I was asked to do uh, talk about my studio practice as an artist and what's it what it's like to live in rural Wisconsin um, and I have to say this summer I've been extremely focused on the gardens and in a lot of ways it's uh, kind of supplemented my art practice um, in a lot of ways it's kind of I wouldn't say replacing but it's it's adding to and becoming more robust um, as you can see maybe I'll do like a quick pan um, everything is very lush so last time we talked things were just beginning to bud out and there's just a little bit of green now everything is very lush So I want to bring it back to the koi pond because um, this has been my pretty my main focus uh, since we started. I'm going to feed them and see if they come up. Something I I didn't know about koi fish is that they are naturally bottom feeders. And so you have to train them to eat off of the surface of the water. Um, yeah, and obviously they're a little bit shy. They're actually, um, they're very active early in the morning before the sun hits the water. I think it warms up, it gets a little too hot for them. The little fish in there. But kind of over there.
I'm gonna do a little move. Perfect. What's everyone up to this morning? Okay, that way I can get a little out of the sun. Okay, cool. So are there any um, koi ponds, koi garden, water pond enthusiasts watching? Oh, my shadow, cool. <laughs> hey! Uh, this is my favorite party trick. It's maybe my only party trick. It's my only um, shadow puppet I can do. Maybe I should just be a shadow puppet artist. Hmm. Here's a good moment. Let's see if we can get those fish to come up. <laughs> yeah, the shadow puppet. Um, so I guess I wanted to talk a little bit, start off the tour today talking a little bit about um, keeping, being a fish keeper and uh, putting together a water garden in the koi ponds and how that's influenced my art practice um, in the recent weeks. So, oh wait, now they're over there, those little stinkers. They're being naughty. There, now you can see the fish. Yeah, they're really cool. The thing I like about the koi, um, I recently, well, I don't know. I think for me, having something to focus on that was already here. So this, uh, the koi pond was already built. It was a structure on the property that we moved on to, uh, but it was pretty neglected and fairly in a kind of a terrible place. The, the pond was put in and there were perennials around the edges, but uh, it wasn't suitable for fish um, to stay alive and definitely not even plants really. So this spring and early summer, I've been completely cleaning this out. I think the last uh, studio visit I did. The water was uh, very dirty. This wasn't built up at all. I think we just barely had the water feature kind of built. Yeah, fish trainer. Uh, apparently Jackie Chan has like a viral video online of him teaching a koi how to roll over. I'm not quite at that level yet, but um, the care upkeep, it's so intense. I d so somebody asked, uh, what is the care upkeep like? I had no idea how much work it was going to be, but obviously you can't just like put fish in the water. Um, koi being a specialized breed, they tend to be um, a little bit weaker than wild carp, which they're related to. So if you think about like dogs being domesticated from uh, wolves or other wild canines, you can't really take a dog and put it in the wild um, with wolves and expect it to live. So it's the same with koi and carp. Um, I've learned so much about koi. Koi uh, were being developed uh, around like starting in the 18th century in China. It was roughly the same time that Europeans were specializing breeds of dogs. So I found that very interesting that these two different cultures on different sides of the planet were um, kind of making these specialized breeds of animals at the same time. And to put that into context, there's around 200 uh, varieties of dogs and there's about 120 varieties of koi patterns. So they're somewhat similar. Uh, the upkeep for the pond, I have a filter system going and a pump. The filter system has a UV light 
um, filter system in it. So uh, the UV light, the water passes through the UV light chamber and it uh, kills single celled microorganisms. Um, Allison, maybe you know more about that. I mean, you're, you're a professional at growing um, algae. Uh, I don't know much about the algae part yet, um, but I'm getting there. Um, I've also added some water cleaners that are uh, natural, like barley. And uh, the plants help a lot as well. The aerate uh, plants, especially tropical plants, I think they take, they remove, uh, they adjust the pH levels, I believe. Messing with Mother Nature, yeah. Uh, I was just talking to a friend this morning about um, how much we've designed the natural environment, how, uh, yeah, I don't know. We've kind of designed the world in such a way. Hmm. Um, I actually had, I have a few artists from the cities visiting today. Uh, we did a little social distancing um, retreat this weekend. I asked them to be in the video and do a little panel, but uh, I haven't convinced them yet. You guys want to say hi? <laughs> yes. Hmm. I think some of you will know these folks. Uh, hey, cool. It's Tori and Seth. Hey. <laughs> and Simon. Um, do you guys want to talk about the storm last night? Wow. Oh my so gosh, yeah. we set up a tent next to the willow tree near the beautiful koi pond. And at about three yeah. in the morning, there was a nature rave. Yeah. And it was lightning and thunder and a little bit of wind we kind of had like a wind barrier from from where we we're at but it was pretty electric it's pretty electric <laughs> yeah it's basically constant constant strobe lighting there was really no breaks until the raining had stopped so christopher selick says hi tori and drew <laughs> or seth <laughs> <laughs> um, there's my partner Nick in the background. Um, yeah, how's everyone's gardens doing? Oof. The sun is really uh, pretty intense today. Um, so yeah, I think I wanted to talk I think my koi pond, um, in a lot of ways, has supplemented my artist practice. I'm still uh, drawing quite a bit. I'm still making a series of work. They're not quite one a week anymore. I, I think just because of the upkeep of gardens and uh, gardening and weeding and this pond, the, the drawings are about maybe one every two weeks or one every week and a half. But I've noticed that they've shifted to you know how gardening influenced my art practice or how I think about art or work with art and and I think there are moments that are happening my work tends to be somewhat experiential at the moment a little bit diaristic and that I'm uh, creating work based on my lived experiences and there's just been some really weird moments that I've trying to mate but it was this kind of like very grotesque 
strange moment that I was a part of that I just kind of witnessed um, and don't really understand. And so uh, I've been making a drawing about that. I've been working on uh, working on drawings based on the koi, based on water, based on snakes. Um, I think my work has always had a vein in environmentalism and ecological thought and and, and also queer identity. Those are the two things that I focus on in my practice. And, and I think right now it's kind of focusing more on uh, the, the ecological thought, thinking about uh, the mass extinction that we're currently a part of and ecological degradation and just being present with the environment, whatever that may be, wherever you, I can be a part of it, which is everywhere. Um, but yeah. Lots of vegetables. Um, I guess let's do a little, we can do like an AMA, ask me anything. Um, but I also kind of want to hear some conversation with people about their experiences with ecology. Like that question, what is your relationship to ecology? And I'm curious if people think about that or how it influences their life or their actions, if at all. If anyone wants to chime in, that'd be incredible. Hmm. Joe Tallarico joined. Hey, man. Uh, Joe Tallarico is one of my oldest friends. Uh, we've known each other since we were about nine or ten. Uh, Joe, what is your relationship to ecology? How would you define that at this current moment? Um, to be, yeah, shadow play. Let's see. <laughs> Um, Joe says he loves nature, but it's always, it always wants to hurt him. It's always trying to hurt him. Um, that's true. I think one of the funniest things is, um, you know that phrase that was going around a few years ago, like spaceship earth, like we're on the spaceship. Um, and it's like this hospitable thing that we live on. I think about that in like, um, how that's like not really true, like outside of a small region of uh, the African continent. Like humans shouldn't really exist, but we, we, may, we do anyways. Where are those little fish? Oh, there they are. Um, Fernan Wood said, I've been ex exploring making my own materials from nature, sustainability and mind. I love that. I used to do, um, I sometimes on occasion I would make uh, inks and stuff with natural materials like beets and turmeric and coffee and tea um, when I was kind of focusing on like watercolor water-based media and that was always really nice. I think sustainability is key but it's also really hard as artists. Uh, Allison Hiltner says, I think about this question a lot, how we can embrace how everything is tangled into one beautiful disturbing net of life. Yeah, um, the mesh. There's so much going on all the time and we can't really understand it, I think.
Um, the koi are really funny. I was thinking about possible, if I were to start some sort of business, uh, what would it be? And I was thinking about maybe doing like a koi library of like, or a koi rescue of like rescuing koi's because I think a lot of people, it seems pretty common that people will buy koi's and try to keep them in aquariums and they, they outgrow the aquariums really fast. And so I was wondering like, oh, what if I like did a koi rescue and then there was like a library service and I rented them out to people uh, like during the summer and then took care of them during the winter. Um, if anyone wants to <laughs> start that that business with me, let me know. Uh, Joe says uh, he also lives near a nature preserve and working from home this year, he's had the privilege of witnessing nature's more candid moments, both brutal and beautiful. Um, I love that. That's very poetic. Um, yeah, life is brutal. Um, let's see. Um, my sister Chelsea. Chelsea, are you still there? How? What is your relationship like to nature? This is Rosie. Rosie shows up in a lot of my artworks. I have a lot of drawings of Rosie. <laughs> oh, wait, weird. <laughs> Hey, Chels, how are you doing? Man, I really shouldn't mess with tripods. I am not very good at the technical part of things. Mm. I suppose at some point, we should probably take a look at the baby goslings. Uh, my sister Chelsea says, I find nature to be the element that keeps me the most grounded. I spend my professional days in marketing and on networking platforms when I break from the space and walk along rivers. Yeah, I hope um, with people working from home and continuing to work from home, it seems like we will continue for a while longer. Um, I hope people are getting outside. Um, and even, even in winter, you know, we're moving into... We're moving into winter quickly. You know, it's July, but I've already noticed like leaves starting to fall, uh, which is really kind of dramatic. But uh, I think the best thing about winter in the Midwest is actually just getting out, getting out in it. Oh, my sister finished her thoughts. So like taking walks uh, on streets and observe is centers and allows her to place a human element into the professional work. Uh, she also loves the time people have put into their gardens and landscapes. I've really noticed that too. It seems like a lot of people are gardening this year, which is really quite fantastic. Um, hey, welcome. If you're just joining, I'm about to head over to the baby goslings. Uh, I don't know how the connection will be. I hope it doesn't drop. If it does drop, I will start it up immediately after. Um, or if the, if the film kind of breaks it all. Uh, but I'm going to walk over there. You guys are going to be... You guys are gonna shit your pants. Um, here's a little, maybe I'll walk slow. Oh yeah, my sister's in St. Louis. Uh, gardens have started to look more like Ireland pride, which was uh, never before. The flocks have started to bloom. 
just this week. So we have quite a few colors. This is a really cool plant. I don't actually know what this is. If anyone can identify it, please do so. It's like this big, beautiful thing. I don't even know what this is. I'll post a photo of it later. Um, another thing I've been spending a lot of time on is, um, let's see, where are we? Carving these hedge tunnels. And there's Tori and Seth in their tents. If anyone wants to come out at any point for a social distance uh, tent retreat, hit me up, let me know. Hi, little geese. <laughs> You guys aren't going to believe this. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> Come here. Um, yeah, so these are the same baby geese that you saw before. Come here! Come here! Yeah, um... What do you think? They got a little big, didn't they? Hi! Hi, come here! They're not as friendly either. They're still pretty friendly, but they're kind of skittish. I just realized... Yeah, they're so loud. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Chirp, 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 chirp. Yes, come here! Look at these crazy things. <laughs> Little dinosaurs. Prehistoric. <laughs> Here, we'll get down high level. Cute little dinosaurs. I just realized this is so intense. Um, I didn't realize until just this moment, but here, maybe I, uh, no. Yeah, I'll take this off quick. This limb of this tree totally fell down last night in the storm we had. Uh, no, no geese were harmed, it looks like. Hi, little guys. They're trying to eat the tripod. <laughs> Come on in. Hi. Let's see, I'm sure they'll try to eat my phone. <laughs> um All right, so there's the old geese. 
They are not as friendly. They are very cautious. And then we have two little baby geese. Um, they're not as nice as these baby geese because they were hatched out by the hens and they, they weren't incubated. I find it very funny that they're trying to eat. Um, I do want to show you guys, I have, we have more cute baby animals that I will, I'll show you. Say goodbye to the geese. Now that they are um, young adults, maybe they're not as interesting as they were before. Say goodbye. See you later, little geese. Have fun. Here's some more of the gardens. Big willow tree. The house. Um, so we're gonna go through the barn. It's a little messy. But we have this kind of crazy barn space that I didn't get to last time. Uh, this is my partner Nick's project, cleaning this up, uh, keeping the animals friendly and safe. Um, oh. uh, Andrea is still online. Hey Andrea, these are the pigs we got from you. Um, Andrea has a really great farm called Rooted Acres Farmstead uh, over here in River Falls, Wisconsin, or Spring Valley actually. Um, she Yeah. Did you guys see the pigs or did it buffer out? It's buffering. What's it doing now? You, you can see one pig. Oh, really? Is it frozen? Oh, now you're live. That's nice. <laughs> a little bit of a hesitation. Okay. Well, I'm back. Maybe I'll go. We'll talk to Elmer. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Um, animal tour keeps going. This is Elmer. Elmer Happy Bear. Hi, buddy. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I came back inside. I'm heading into the studio because the connection was really bad. And I'm really sad because the pigs are really nice. And I don't know if anyone got to see them really. Um, but I'm going to come back into the studio and I want to talk about, um, hopefully it's looking okay. Um, so here's some more, here's some of my more recent drawings. I just put a couple up. I do want to spend maybe the last 20 minutes of the studio visit now that we're inside and the connection should be a little bit better, ought to be a little bit better. Um, let's see here. Let me get my tripod back out. Yeah, do you want to talk about it? Do you want to join the live? <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about it. But 
I'll yeah. listen. Okay. I'll um, listen. we have a visitor. This is Saman. Hi. Hi. Um, Saman wants to see my drawings, so we're gonna talk about some drawings. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I think in the last twenty minutes of the studio visit, I would like to do like a AMA, ask me anything, uh, questions about my practice, about art and um, yeah, talk a little bit about what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about artistically and what the future of that looks like for me. It's just gonna be a little bit of an angle. Yeah, it's a really swell studio. Um, it's just enough space. So I have this kind of like big easel drawing board and um, I've been working, I tend to work a little bit smaller these days like I said, the last studio visit, I do this, maybe if, if you aren't around for that studio visit, uh, this is kind of my standard size and format of working right now. I work 15 by 22 inch half sheets of standard uh, artist grade drawing paper. Uh, they're mostly graphite and drawing at this point. I really wanted to reinvest with um, graphite drawings, which are kind of the thing that got me started as an artist. Um, and like I said, I'm focusing more on kind of nature and my relationship to the environment. So like they tend to be a little bit more um, responsive to the world. But uh, this is a deer skull, which uh, a relative gave to my partner, Nick, as a uh, as a uh, chew toy for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ooh, check out this little guy. You guys ready for a cool thing? Ready? He's an athlete. He's a star. He spin. Spin. Oh boy! I wish I knew what the video was doing. I think it's a Is little, it I think it might be, I don't know. Hey, Miss Caitlin Rose, welcome. Uh, I'm just talking about drawings, but like I said, I want to open it up to and ask me anything, anything. If uh, anyone has any questions about my studio practice, what I'm doing, um, yeah, what's up um, with drawing in the summer of 2020? Can you talk about the last one? Yeah, so that... What? No, go ahead. Yeah, so this piece um, on the right is... Uh, it's like a human skull with a mask on it and it has text around the edges and it says, don't have to wear a mask if you ain't got no ears. Um, you know, I'm just really thinking about, um, I guess, like public safety, health concerns, and in this moment, uh, in this moment, how we don't really know maybe as much as we should about the coronavirus and uh, the pandemic that we're currently living in that's shaping, that's affecting every part of our life and reshaping the way we think about things and interact with each other. Um, and I just think about like people who like are absolutely refusing to wear a mask in public spaces and how, um, I don't know, it's ultimately just like a really selfish thing. Um, you know, the effectiveness of mask is being debated, but I think the general consensus is it's better than nothing. Please do it. Um, and so the idea is like, you don't have to wear a mask. If you got no ears, so if you're, if you're dead, you don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> a lot of my work deals with death um, in a lot of ways. Elmer is majestic, he's a good boy. Um, so I think, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Let's ask some questions. Um, earlier in the, the talk, I was talking about this moment I had where I found these toads in the pond, like in this kind of grotesque moment. Um, this is the piece I've been working on for that. It has an image of the the toads that I'm drawing, and it's like the big dead toad with the two toads tucked to it. 
And has text that says, Love sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Hey, Jay Nevs. Uh, Jennifer <laughs> Nevitt, how's it going? Where did you go? It's got a big, big bark. Accurate. <laughs> Love sucks. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's gonna be, maybe it's gonna say love sucks the life out of you. Um, Jennifer Nevin, what are you up to? We're talking about ecology and art this morning. What's your relationship to the environment? How can I... <laughs> Jennifer says she's drawing boats. Um, I remember that series of uh, almost that series of little paintings and drawings you were doing about um, uh, like almost like nautical flags, and I really like the the kind of like subtle simplicity of that work. So it makes sense that you're drawing boats. We're all gonna need a boat. <laughs> Um, okay, question. Regarding your nature drawing, do you prefer plants or animals? Um, I think... Oh, so sorry about the dog. He's... Get a great Funies, I said. He won't bark, I said. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think a really good... That is a really good question about... Um, regarding nature drawings, do I prefer animals or plants? I think when I first started my career as a visual artist, I was really into drawing animals. I think at that point it was uh, a technical challenge, uh, how to render an animal, how to render fur, how to render paws, how to render feathers or scales uh, or bones, anatomy of animals. And I still really enjoy doing that. Um, but I think I've gotten a little bit more complex. Uh, plants allow complexity. So when I'm working with uh, plant-based imagery, it tends to be more detailed, um, much more intense. It's a, it's a little bit harder of a conceptual space to work through visually on a visual picture plane on a visual format. Um, I will say, however, people respond way more to animals. Um, and <laughs> it's so sad, but especially mammals. Like people, I think, tend to be attracted to mammals over like serpents. Um, or fish, which is really sad. And I think people don't really, aren't really attracted to plants. And it might be because um, I, I think maybe many people don't have a, a intimate relationship with plants. Like if you're a gardener, if you're someone who knows plants, I, I always know because those people are really attracted to the plants, um, the flora that I'm drawing. Uh, and that's, that's like a really cool thing that happens. And it's, it's kind of like an end, like, okay, yeah, we can talk about this. Um, I also think, uh, I think text is a big part of my work now too. So blending text with, um, the drawings and people ask me about their relationship. Like, uh, some people, even if I have a text-based drawing, will say, oh, well, I'm not really, a, I'm not really drawn, drawn, da, da, da. I'm not really attracted to text and uh, but I say, like, what about it as a drawing? Because it is a drawing. And, you know, that kind of catches people up. Uh, but I think the, the text adds, like, this other element. It's almost like the way a title works with the piece, uh, where it can kind of push the work into a more experimental or conceptual space rather than just being, like, say, the skull, which for me is more decorative. It's more design-oriented um, rather than being, I don't know, it doesn't like push things forward. Um, somebody said uh, they think plants are used more decoratively. And I think that's true too. If you look at, um, I guess like Victorian art uh, and like wallpapers and floral designs and patterning, um, it has been used more decoratively. So maybe people kind of disregard it quickly because they've seen it so often as wallpaper or 
bed sheets or you know textile printed on textiles um there's a few we got we got some a few people joining um so if you're just joining if you're joining the conversation uh i'm in my studio here in river falls wisconsin rural uh river falls wisconsin um if you're familiar with minnesota i'm pretty much right across the river from afton state park um and I'm talking about nature drawings, I'm talking about animals, flora, fauna, uh, graphic drawings on paper, and my practice as a visual artist. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, so um, get some questions out. I do want to circle back around, I have this thought, um, people being more interested in this like hierarchy of imagery. So people, I think, tend to gravitate towards like mammals, above like serpents or amphibians, fish or birds, and then, and then those things above plants, and then above uh, like amoebas and single cell organisms and things. And um, I'm, really, I'm a really strong advocate for the object-oriented ontology movement. Uh, I think there's room for criticism in it, but one of the things I like the best is building a relationship with everything around us that's non-hierarchical. So rather than putting things on pedestals, um, we have to get rid of this notion of humans as the pinnacle of life, of importance. That's just not true. Um, and it's not doing anyone any good. And so I think if we want to move forward with environmental thought and uh, protecting what we do have and creating a su sustainable future, we need to kind of check ourselves on our biases. Why do we think humans are more important than dolphins? Or why are dolphins more important than um, algae? Or why are algae more important than plastics? I think we all have to kind of reevaluate that relationship. Um, and yeah, uh, put in some heavy work. It's, we have to, I think we ought to, maybe we don't need to, but we ought to, uh, shift our priorities, our ontological processes into a more um, equitable future, time frame, work frame. Um, if you have any last minute questions, we're down to the last few minutes. Go ahead and send them my way. Um, I'm really sorry, the pig portion of uh, the video kind of got choppy. Maybe once I save it, it'll work and you guys can meet the pigs. Um, they're really adorable. And uh, maybe someday I'll, I'll post a video of the pigs so you all can see. Um, yeah, you're welcome. I really appreciate it to have this moment to talk about it. Uh, one last thing uh, to keep you all aware. Uh, I've kind of been reevaluating my relationship with social media as well. Um, I think it's pretty great in a lot of ways, but it's also kind of toxic. And I'm not exactly sure what the impact of just posting my work online is. Um, so I've kind of like taken a step back from posting on things. Uh, but I do want to tell you all that I'm in the, the process of building up a new website. Um, where I'm going to be posting all of these drawings. Uh, and all these drawings are for sale. So there's going to be a commerce feature. If anyone wants to, if you're particularly attracted to any of the drawings, I've sold a few already, which is really cool. Um, and a portion of those proceeds are going to be reinvested in um, communities. So whether it be, um, yeah, I don't know, um, any sort of organization. And I think there's going to be a feature. So if you buy a piece of work and you want 20% of the proceeds to go to the Sierra Club or uh, Reclaim the Block or whatever organization you are uh, really passionate about, I'm going to be reinvesting those those funds into uh, the community. So if you want some great art and you want to help out in the process, um, you know, and keep me going, help me buy some groceries, uh, that'd be great. So stay posted. I will be posting about that in the coming weeks. Um, I'm definitely going to send some pig pictures to Suvac. Uh, big shout out to Suvac for making this possible and continuing support of artists in the community, of bringing our studio practices to you all, whoever wants to watch and join us in these kind of intimate digital moments. It's really sweet. Um, uh, yeah, let's see. Super rad. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, hey, Matt Ziefeld. I just am um, about to wrap up, but thanks for joining. Um, I get, I'm getting, thank you for sharing your space. 
uh, valuable and inspiring. This has been great. Um, Oh, Havla, cool. Uh, Havla was an undergrad at the U of M when I was a grad there. Uh, it's great to see the update on my work and what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I think when you go through a, an education experience, uh, it tends to um, sit with you and you have to sit with that work for a long time and kind of uh, eventually kind of, you know, get back into a flow of things. And I feel like that's kind of the moment I'm at. And I'm really, I'm really excited about the work I'm making. I'm energized and enthusiastic about it, and I'm definitely going to keep making these graphite drawings, um, focusing on queer representation and ecological representation to help, um, I guess with the idea, the hopes, the optimism of uh, helping us move forward into the world uh, and making it a better place for everyone and every living thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Being able to visit studios uh, on your phone is so great because you know, I think um, summer, summer is quickly wrapping up and it seems maybe kind of obvious to me that uh, we're going to be back in our homes, spending a lot of time at home, especially come fall, come winter, moving forward. We don't know what the future looks like. Um, so hopefully support these moments in any ways you can, um, you know, connect with one another. It's, it's a really important time to call friends and family and check in and talk and just have really candid open honest conversations. So uh, I hope I leave you with that. And thanks again. Thanks to Suvac. Thanks for everyone for joining today. Uh, maybe a little bit of a rocky start, rocky middle, but I feel like I gained some traction at the end here. Um, hopefully you've all enjoyed it and reach out, send me a message, uh, send me an email, text me, call me. Um, I love connecting with people. So thank you once again. I'm going to end it there. Uh, but thanks. I hope you all have a great day. Enjoy your brunch, have some coffee, drink a mimosa, uh, eat some eggs vinny or something. And yeah, cool. Um, thank you. I'm really glad you appreciate the graphite drawings. Uh, always gems. Um, thanks everyone, but I'm going to let you go and uh, catch you later. Uh, this video will be saved and uploaded um, to Suvac's website. They're kind of updating all the artists' websites. So if you missed it or you missed a portion of it or you want to share it with anyone, you can go on there on later and reconnect and share that with anyone. Um, thank you, everyone. I love you. Uh, have a good day. Peace and blessings.